Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will not start. I will only make a comment. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. This was a very really comprehensive uh, talk about all what we try to know. I say try to know about Pertus disease, but you will see, and it's our therapy. This is all over. We don't know this, and nobody knows exactly what Pertus is because. If you analyze Pertus and only do say why we get metaphysal cysts, you know, met the metaphysis of the femoral neck has nothing, the, the blood supply has nothing to do with the blood supply of the head. And uh, all these nice pictures from the literature mostly are wrong, especially about vascularity, because we know in the meantime the vascularity is completely different. But over 50 years, 60 years, we copy always in the literature. And we say the same and the same and the same, but in principle, today it's different. You will see a little bit. So, and I had the opportunity to speak with Cattrall, and when I show him the first time, open hip with Pertus, he said, oh my God, it looks completely different from all what I was thinking, because I made all the classification on x-rays. I have never seen an open hip. Okay, so. Let us speak about new aspects in Pertus surgery. And of course, uh, when we need a surgery, this is uh, always a question. So therefore, what we should know, I try to uh, write this also in Spanish, what we have to do, and are there new options? Okay, so a little bit different way. Here, you can read it very well, because I guess it was from Dahlia, uh, some, uh, some many years ago, he sent me this picture of this child, and he was asking me uh, what I'm thinking about this child and about this problem. And you see, everybody of you would say this child had a late purpose because he's 12 years old, and uh, he's suffering, and the hip is not congruent, and uh, is not uh, spheric, and, and, and. Uh, but I will show you, I have never seen this hip, but I will show you what I'm thinking was this hip had. So what is the problem of this hip? First of all, exactly, is, and there's a normal head. You see that it's a normal head from the contralateral side. So the head is not like this. It is a head like this. So it's a hinging hip, and this is the problem, and we should avoid this. So what is the goal of every therapy? Independent of the status, status you know? Sometimes. And we know in the meantime that at least 30% of the purpose we never detect. I see this in the adults. Sometimes you get patients with 30 years and said, oops, what is this hip? Oh, this must be a purpose. The patient, I don't know. I never had a purpose, you know? So silent purpose. So avoiding secondary damages. This is the main goal. Preservation of the so-called containment. Then it will heal. And she, she showed very nicely the three stadiums. We have the infarct, necrosis, and the healing. Every bone heal. But the question is, how the bone heal? Preservation of the sphericity of the femoral head and the acetabulum, guarantee of the function of the hip for some times and the reduction of the lower term some damage. Again, coming back to such uh, publications, you know, when you go to the internet and you read about the purpose and the circulation, then you see pictures like this. And this is completely wrong. I have found hundreds of absolutely wrong pictures. You know, and we have seen before, also from the literature pictures, the circulation of the head is never like this. Okay, she took this from the, from the literature, and in the literature, it's wrong. Okay, so this is, the, look, this is from the experiment we made. We have only this uh, retinaculum here, with the, uh, from the lateral uh, uh, circumflex artery and the medial, and we have no bone, uh, no vascularity here. It's only these three vessels, and uh, then also the medial part here. So we have heard about silver classification. I guess this is very important. I think this is an outcome study, it's not a prognostic study, it's an outcome after experience of illness. In principle, we have seen five classes, but I have this uh, reduced to three groups. That means the normal hip and the spherical head not congruent, but the, the head is still spheri a, a spheric, but not congruent. That means like a dysplastic hip, some low subluxation. So we can treat this in a good way. But then the non-spherical head with other damage, 
flathead with such a damage and then all this. So that means, you see, this is through groups. So we can have this group, this group, this group. And in principle, the, our goal, independent of the situation, and this is the problem nowadays in all over the world, even in Switzerland, that we get the purchase too late or the Parents go to then to the family doctor, and the family doctor says, no, the purchase, don't operate it. OK, wait, 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 and this is wrong. So this is the goal to go, and that you have a good function. OK? So therefore, the question is, when we need therapy? You know, the purchase, we cannot make a purchase therapy. This is like, it's a, ba a bad a comparison. But I explain to the parent always, there is a bump destroy in five seconds all the quarter, and then it takes three, four years to rebuild the buildings, you know? This is like purpose. Okay, so, and then the question is, when we need therapy, not in this stadium or this group or this group. No, if we lose the containment and or the hip isn't centered anymore. That means the goal is to keep the hip in the best position in that acetabulum for, grow, uh, for healing. It's like when you make a cake, you know? If you bring the cake in the form, then you have the cake. If you have only outside, then you have a flat, okay? Then you have a brownie, okay, good. So the great head word is containment. So what does happen if the lows lose the containment? Then we get in aspheric incongruency, stiffness of the hip, and impingement, you know? This is, this is the new way. When we lose containment, and this is we have seen before, when we have some head at risk signs, and you see it here, I will not co uh, repeat it, we have seen this uh, before. Of course, these are all additional risk factors. So, now is the question, how we can achieve uh, the, uh, ferricid, uh, the containment? Can we do this in a conservative way, or we do always need a, sur a surgery? We have some therapeutic options, wait and see, when we have a centered hip. That means in the meantime, every purpose remains contained. We do nothing. We let it do sport, everything. But every three or six months control, and as soon as we see some migration, we get active. That means conservative therapy means splints, but we do not this. This, because the most of the splints are uh, ineffective. So here we see some early signs. You have seen in the sonography as well, but not in the liquid as we have seen before. What we can see in the sonography is the swelling, and this is a clear sign of a purchase. Uh, we have made a study over two years. Only the liquid in the joint is no sign directly for purchase, but the swelling, you see here in this case, the swelling of the cartilage. Then, of course, we follow this hip six months later, still contained, okay, and it will heal. You know, nothing happens, okay, even if we have a severe purpose. Here is another situation, you know, we see the collapse, but still contained, all contained, never treated, good outcome, okay? This is the situation we have not to react. Not every purpose needs surgery because the surgery cannot improve the containment. You see, this is fantastic containment, so we, uh, we have not to do. Again, splints, this is qu uh, questionable, and especially not such splints, this makes no sense nowadays. Here, other situation, it's an older situation, L 11 year old boy, look at his hips, limping, pain, okay? What kind of op uh, 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 options we have? Of course, very often, nowadays, is the classic intertrochant osteotomy. But we should not do this. You will see this. This is not for purpose. Definitely not. The triple osteotomy is the best way to do this. Or sometimes really intertrochanteric and triple, 50-50. And the new surgical hip dislocation and offset creation, not recommended, definitely not recommended, are Salter or self-procedure in the purpose. So here, in other case, you see this head is out here. In the abduction, we see a better containment. And in this situation, the, uh, the, the, the surgeon make an osteotomy. But you see, 
still the head is not covered. So over the time it will heal, but he will make an impingement. So this is not the best way, it's a better way to bring it over. Okay, here's such an example. You see, we have a short acetabulum, some subluxation, and then you see, with the triple osteotomy, we can make a perfect, absolute perfect containment. And you see then the healing in this situation and before, and then we end up in a normal head. And as again, nothing on the femur, because the femur uh, situation is good. So here, another case, as we have seen before, you see here, with cysts in this situation, then the treat, it was treat, not treated, means conservative treatment, no treatment, because their uh, parents refused an operation here, because this is a hinging situation, and you see we end up in this, and here again, why we see this. So, okay, again, here the situation, six months after the diagnosis, but you agree the diagnosis was very late, we see this sometimes, and what we can do here. So, this is a new view and approach to the hip. When we open this hip before, as you have seen before here, this hip, this hip looks inside like this, you know? So, completely rupture of the cartilage, empty, necrosis, and you could open the whole head and inside was a vacuum, you know? So, how we can solve this problem? We bring in, a, we make a debridement, and we make a bone grafting, and as you can see, we blow up the head and build up a new head. Because when you have an abscess in the muscle, what you are doing, you make a drainage. Eh? You remove the necrosis. Why not in the bone, of course, or the osteomyelitis? And you see, then we build a new head, and now it looks good, and the child goes good with relative lengthening. Other situation, this was a purpose, you see, treated with a, a intertrochant osteotomy, it's a problematic situation for the patient and ends up in this. And now we have a deformity and this ugly situation in the hip. Okay, in the MRI, we see very nicely that is a hinging hip and destroy all this here. So what we did here, we made the bumpectomy and the relative leg, neck lengthening that we could contain the hip in a better way and give this a better function. But here, another situation. This colleague made a triple osteotomy in a, per, a pertus as well, and, but he made an overcoverage. So this child suffers over the time, and you see the hip looks like this. So this creates a, also an impingement. So what we are doing, we're doing a surgical hip dislocation. Okay, I will go sh shortly over this. And this was the hip, you see? We have two heads. One head is here, one head is here, and one part is here, okay? So we reshaped all the head in this way, as you can see here from different views, and now it fits very nice in the joint, and you see now it's much better than before, okay? This is before, and this is after the surgery. So we can solve the problem here. How we did the lengthening of the neck, the relative, as you can see here, this is the way to do this. Other case, you see this hip, the evolution, waiting too long, then pain in the hip, you see, and you see in the MRI here the necrosis, this is a good part, this is a good part. And you see all this part, even in also in the X-ray, and this is this and this. Okay, now you will see when we open the hip, the hip looks like this. So, okay, we make the debridement, the tablum was also, and the labrum was damaged. We've uh, repaired it. We made bone graft from the greater canter. But how we can cover the cartilage? Where we get the cartilage? Of course, we get the cartilage from here, and we bring it to the head, and we have special hooks to hold this, and then over the time, it heals, and the child had a fantastic head and a healed head without any problems over years, you see, in this way. So coming back to this case, you know, you see exactly the X-ray, you see this zone, and now we can say what is the problem. I believe that this hip had exactly the same situation as here. So other case, next step in a purpose, you see the collapse here of the head, and then waiting, this situation, all this, and in the MRI we see the same 
in the, the how to do. Again, surgical hip dislocation, we see this head, and what we can do now is that we split the head, we remove the necrosis, we bring it away, and now you see, and then we have healthy bone and healthy uh, cartilage. Here you see the necrosis, you see, and all this, and we bring the head together and build a new head, and now we have a contained hip with a perfect situation, and it is healed and a good function, okay, over a long time. Here another case with a limping hip, a hinging hip, as you can see here, relative lengthening, but still subluxated. So in this situation, we have to make a, a, a additional triple osteotomy. So a single treatment modality is probably not sufficient. So in the pertus, every pertus is different. So it needs a, a really adapted treatment. The pertus disease has clearly many aspects so that probably the concept of a family of disease, we can say, so this is the Morbus Pertus family. The examples of different treatment which I have showed demonstrate the applicability of the, this philosophy. Stable hips don't need the treatment at all. Intertrochant osteopathy, like also triple osteopathy, can cause an impingement. Thank you very much. <laughs>